Guys, the podcast coming up right now, I need to make sure I give you a trigger warning. Carrie and I are going to talk about abuse, physical abuse, rape. Um, we're going to talk about molestation, incest. Um, it might not be a good podcast for younger ears. So parents, if you do listen in the car with your kids, just understand, um, Carrie and I have gone through some, some abuse in our past, and uh, we're going to talk about Joyce Meyer and her incest from her father for 18 years. And so just a warning, that is coming up on this podcast. So parents, just understand, um, make the decision that you want to make according to your children's ages and whatever is appropriate you think for them. Um, and if this is something you battle with, again, trigger warning, that is something we're going to discuss in this podcast. Okay. Enjoy it. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer. Carrie, it has been a while since you've introduced yourself. I think you should do it. I should do it again. My name is Carrie Thompson. I'm the chief operations officer here at Code Red. Christy headhunted me uh, from doing open heart and trauma ICU nursing for many years. I also am a failed weight loss surgery survivor, meaning I sneaked off to a foreign country and I had weight loss surgery and it didn't work. But uh, because of following the tenets of Code Red, I've maintained a hundred pound weight loss for over 10 years now. And I'm super excited to be here. It's a great topic, Christy. This is your, this is your baby today. Yeah, this is, you know, I, I got it. I can't take complete credit for it. Cause I, you know, there are no original ideas, but I, I listened to Joyce Meyer a lot and uh, Carrie and I both do. We really enjoy Joyce Meyer ministries. I've been a partner with Joyce Meyer ministries for many years. I really, really love the hand of hope. I love uh, the different programs that they do, the different outreach. Anyway, um, on uh, Joyce Meyer talks a lot about forgiveness, uh, like a lot of ministers, televangelists, whatever you want to say, uh, you know, people who have a pulpit ministry or people in general, but we all, we talk about forgiveness a lot. And the name of this podcast is do yourself a favor and forgive. And I get that this is rebel weight loss and lifestyle. And you're kind of like, ah, but listen, I believe and Carrie, tell me what you think as a former heavy person, as a former person who battled obesity for many years, I think that a lot of people who are uh, battle with obesity, it is a manifestation of the guilt, shame, and unforgiveness uh, in their life, not all cases, but in many cases, people have unforgiveness. They are just harboring that bitterness. Would you agree? Am I on to something or totally off? I like the theory. I think that for a majority, uh, probably more, more than not, uh, I just liked food, but I also was very unhappy, Christy. And I also had some unforgiveness in my life. You know, now that I'm thinking back, now that I'm just kind of, you know, uh, mulling that over in my head. But I do think for the majority rather than the minority, that weight is somehow wrapped up in what happened in the past and people that have wronged you. I, I agree. Well, we could pass the microphone around the room. All of you guys listening right now could give us all story upon story. Not all of you. Some of you have had great lives and you haven't really had any trauma, but most of us have had trauma trauma. Some of you have had unspeakable trauma and we, we recognize that we hear you. We, you know, we, we come around you. We love you through that. Um, and I would, I, I would take my problems over some, some of your problems any day, but I know that Carrie, I can tell you that I would take my problems over a lot of your problems and the trauma and the, the victimization and the things that a lot of you have been through. So we're not trying to diminish that. Certainly. I do also want to say that Carrie and I have been through our share of crap stuff that you guys can't possibly understand molestation, domestic abuse. I know that I was physically abused 
verbally abused, emotionally abused uh, with from my first husband. And uh, it, it was awful. And so if, if, if anybody could hold some unforgiveness, it definitely could be us. And we get that. In fact, you know, I think back to, um, you know, the, the abuse that happened and, uh, I, I think to myself, I, I don't have any unforgiveness, but I certainly could. I mean, it's, it's easy to want to wish harm and uh, on people like that, but the, the reality is they don't know that they, when you're, when you're not forgiving them, that's only hurting you. That's kind of the whole point of the podcast today. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. No, I'm yeah. teasing. <laughs> I was going to say, Christy, that when Christy and I were both molested by the same step uncle, um, he's obviously not a, a part of our lives. And I will never forget that when our parents found out, um, they did the right thing. They sat us down. They talked to us. Do you remember this, Christy? And they talked to us and they had a serious conversation. Of course, they were heartbroken. Um, my dad was especially mm -hmm. devastated. My mom was devastated as well. Um, I just remember dad like crying. It was very, no, ha their reaction was so good, was so appropriate that it helped me deal with the trauma of it. And I'll never forget what Papa Larry said. He said to me, Carrie and Christy, maybe you don't remember this, Christy, but he said, you never have to forgive him if you don't want to now. Okay. That goes against what we believe as Christians truly. Um, but my dad gave us permission. He gave us the power to deal with this, uh, this abuse that we had suffered in the way we wanted to. And I think that at first, um, you know, I definitely did not want to forgive. And then as years want, went on, I realized that I was just letting this man have power and control over my life. It had nothing to do with him. And because when I forgive, if you're a Christian, when you forgive somebody, Christy, it's between them and God. Now mm -hmm. it's not between you and God or you and them. It's now between them and God, you forgive it. You're out of the picture. So if you choose to hang on to that, then that it becomes an issue in your own spiritual life. Um, but I, I do tell you that when dad said that to us, and I don't know if you remember that, that was very powerful. He in, probably unknowingly because he wasn't a counselor back then, was he? He empowered you and I. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you had the rest of the sentence. I oh, no, no. Empowered you and I, and then you were going to keep going. So I, I thought, well, what did you remember from that? I, I don't, I don't have as good of memories, but I do remember having a talk with him. And I do remember how incredibly angry he was as any father, as any parent would be. And just, and I remember mom, I, I remember mom trying to calm him down. Like I, I, I remember him being so upset that he was going to like take matters into his own hands. And, you know, we lived in Idaho and, you know, we don't even know where he was. We think he was in California. And I mean, like, I think dad was going to leave. And like, I don't know, I don't even want to say it out loud, but, um, the, the way that I have dealt with un, uh, forgiveness in my life is this is, this is, this is it right here. Cause a couple of things have happened to me. Yes. The molestation, then the abuse. And then I had a man later on in my life, steal $36,000 from me that I was saving to start my own gym. And I was just so bitter. And I had, I, I, I it was just awful. I had to start over from zero and so the way I kind of, I kind of handle it is look, my, there's nothing that I'll ever be able to do to this person to, to get them back more than what God will do. God's going to handle it. God's going to be like the, we as Christians believe that God is our vindicator and there's, there's nothing that's going to happen. I just, I can't to have to stand before God and answer for what you did to somebody like that. I, I, I don't want to, you know, like, like that, that's pretty, that's pretty harsh punishment to stand before all me, almighty God and answer to what you did knowingly to another person it, it, to abuse them like that. Boy, um, I don't, that's going to be quite the judgment day. So to me, I just go, Hey, my anger towards them is not going to be nearly as much as God's anger towards them. You don't hurt God's people. Christy, I have met some bitter and unforgiving people. And, um, when I was young, uh, after this abuse took place, I recall having a dream and I mean, I think it was, you know, spiritually inspired from God. People say that a lot. I'm very cautious about using that term. And I saw a tree 
And I saw this tree in the root system hanging on to something, if I remember correctly. And it just became so withered and it died. And I felt like um, God was saying to me, Carrie, of course, you don't have to forgive. But the more you hang on to this, the more it sucks the life out of you. And Christy, I, and you know, I'm going to give you the sister look because you know exactly the people I'm talking about in our lives that we know, relatives, et cetera, that are unforgiving because of uh, valid things, y'all. Like we're not saying these are not valid things, okay? It, it's, I'll use a Larry Terhurst term. It will eat your lunch and it does. It eats your lunch. It is, it is emotionally and it, it, it's a burden to your soul to carry around unforgiveness. And I believe it manifests itself in weight problems in um, failed relationships. Um, and Christy, um, some people that, you know, I'm thinking of, it has manifested itself in actual physical pain, mm -hmm. physical, real pain is, it is the, I believe is the, the root of this is this horrible bitterness and it's unforgiveness because unforgiving someone, it starts out, meh, it's, you know, it's not good. You know, you move on and then it just kind of, it morphs, I believe. And some people I've seen it kind of morph into this bitterness and it just kind of takes over people and everyone watching, you know, you've met people like this, you know, exactly what I'm talking about. And I think for me, when I, I didn't understand what our uncle had done to us because we we're so young and then, and my parents didn't really talk to us about sex and about, about touching. Like we do with the, like you, like you did with your kids, you know, we always tease the kids, I, you know, like we were so open with them about things. Like I'm, I say we only because I follow suit to how you, how you raised them. I just kind of did what you did, like whatever, whatever mom says to do, aunt, aunt Christie's going to follow suit, you know, and you would, you know, you would tease them, you would say things like, you know, we would just, I'm laughing because we would send them off to the park or something to play. And we say, okay, don't let anybody touch you in your swimsuit spot, you know, or something. It's true. And, and you were really good about talking, but mom and dad weren't as good about talking about that stuff. So when I got into junior high and I started finding out what all this was and it really screwed me up. I mean, it caused a whole host of problems in my life where I remember really uh, really being messed up for a while, you know, and I remember mom and dad had to pay for counseling for me and then we didn't have the money for it. Like I was just really, and it, it just started coming out and manifesting itself in other ways. So I know firsthand how that stuff can really, and that was even something, you know, if you mild compared to like Joyce Meyer, who was molested by her dad from the time she was a little girl all the way until um, she left she was, home. Wasn't she raped by him actually? Oh, yeah, whatever you want to call it, you know, like it wasn't says, just like a little bit of, you know, no, like, no, it wasn't just like a little Dane bit of cook says uncle diddles in the <laughs> game room. It's not like that. Like it was, sorry, I'm not making right. fun, but I mean, oh, it was severe. Like it was bad. Severe. Yeah, it was, it was, it was straight up, um, yeah, straight up raping. And, um, he would, uh, and he even like, he was caught one time in the back of a car by a policeman and the policeman said, I'll let you off. If you let me have time with her. And mm. they got a call and the policeman had to leave, but it was some horrific things that she went through. Not only that, not only the, that the incest, but her mom knew about it and, and didn't do anything about it. She told a family member, everybody abandoned her to this because everybody was so afraid of this man who was an alcoholic and he was extremely angry. He was physically violent. He was just a horrible man his whole life. And so you think to me, when I think about unfor when I can think about forgiving something for, for somebody that happened in my life, man, if Joyce can do it, I can do it. You know, if, 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 if my, oh, and then hopefully if you hear our stories, maybe you go, well, geez, I'm holding unforgiveness for, for the, you know, for somebody keeping a dime of my money at the, you know, then you're going to hearing our stories is going to make you realize that you can forgive too. So I am thankful for Joyce for coming out with the incest because it has healed millions of people around the world for the past 45 years of her ministry. And then of course, in our small way, sharing our experiences about forgiveness, I believe we're healthier, happier people because we've been able to forgive those who have wronged us. I mean, let's normalize not it happening, but let's normalize our ability to talk about it. Yes. I mean, I, you were laughing about the kids. I, I say to Anne Marie now, Hey, don't touch me there. This is my no, no square. And I do, I make the little square and she goes, mom, 
But I think that, you know, it's sort of like talking about periods. It's talking about things like that. Like we have to normalize that these things do take place. Sadly, hopefully it's getting better. I, the numbers certainly don't show that, but I am, I'm inspired by what Joyce was able to do. And, and when you choose to forgive, and I remember when I forgave Christy and the people that you've had to forgive in your life and the people that I've had to forgive wrongly or rightly or made up or justified or unjustified. Some of you listening to me right now, you have stories like Joyce. And I want to say to you, I see you. I understand that that's extremely painful. And, but when, when you have that moment, when you come to that moment where you can not let it go and it's not okay. I want to say that it doesn't make it okay. Right. Christy, like, it's not okay that these things happen. That's not what you're saying. You're just saying you no longer can take up space in my heart. You, this, this offense that was done to me, I'm taking the power back from this. And I got to tell you, I think it's powerful. I know Joyce's dad said to her later, later on, right before he died, he had no idea that he was hurting her so much that he was going to screw up her life until she got her life until God cleaned up her life. And so he, he said, I had no, idea. it was done to him and it was done to his dad. It was incest was passed down through the family, hurting people, hurt people. I'm not saying it was, it's just, this is what happened. And he had no idea. So can I just flip it around and say that some of you might be listening right now and I have done something to hurt you. I have said something over the past seven years that really rubbed you wrong, that maybe you, you know, you said something to me at an event. I didn't hear you. You thought I was ignoring you. Maybe I gave you a look. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I did something and I, I absolutely made the mistake of, um, of reacting the way I did a hundred percent. I understand that. And you're hurt and you, you're, uh, you're hurt at me. I get that, but know that I don't know this. I'm not losing sleep over your unforgiveness to me. So I, cause I don't know that it happened. I don't even know. So think about that when you're flipping it back around to whoever, it, whoever they don't, they don't know. You're the one suffering your, your secrets make you sick. And this unforgiveness, this bitterness that you're harboring is making life worse for you and making you sick. And that person that did that to you probably doesn't even know it. So you're only hurting yourself here. Yeah. And it, it is hard. And Christy, sometimes when you forgive, you have to go back and forgive again. Mm. I know that probably is, I mean, you have to go back and kind of renew that forgiveness because I know like, if you think about the person that stole money from you, I bet you're like, okay, you know what, Lord, I'm laying this at your feet. I'm letting it go. And then something comes up and you go that blankety, you don't cuss, but that you want to that blankety blank. Like, I can't believe that person did that to me. And you got to say, you know what? I forgave them and I'm letting it go. And it gets easier. It's sort of like saying no to the crap foods. The more you do it, the easier it really does get. And I believe that is how it is a forgiveness. I have a scripture, Christy. Are you ready? I would love one. Everyone knows this one. I'm looking down at my, at my phone, just so everyone knows Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. And again, Luke 6, 37, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Here it is, folks. Forgive and you will be forgiven. So we, if you are a Christ believer, you don't have a choice. I have to tell you, I really appreciated Papa Larry giving us that choice because it gave me power. And that's what I needed to hear as a little girl. Um, but at some point you have to deal with it. Um, and then Matthew six fourteen, if you forgive other people, when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. And God is so awesome, Christy. And he can see the bigger picture. And he sees that when you forgive, it releases you from that part. It just takes the power away. It's like that story. Remember I told about Brandon and I getting our finances in order. Like I didn't know how much we owed until I sat down and actually got like, like an actual piece of paper and a pencil and wrote it all down. It took the power away from that debt knowing what exactly it was. It's the same thing. Forgiveness. When you step in front of it, 
when you say, I'm not going to let you take my space up, it takes the power back. It gives you back the power. You shift the differential. And God knows that. That's why he asks us to forgive. And I believe that I have what I have today as far as blessings because I've been able to forgive. I, I, I can't say whether or not I would have these things if I were still harboring bitterness yes. and unforgiveness. I don't think I would. I I don't know. There's, it will never know. But for me, you know, being, being, being a domestic abuse survivor, I have been asked to speak at domestic abuse, um, gatherings or, um, you know, s s conferences. In fact, Carrie, we were in Florida. We had that lady ask me to come to Chicago and speak, uh, next spring. Um, and it's, uh, and it's, it's women's abuse. It's, it's all women. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's, for that. And so that's something I'm so honored to be able to, to do. I wouldn't trade it. Do I, it was it wrong. Yeah, of course it was wrong, but it has made me into who I am today. And I, and because I was able to pass those tests and forgive and move on, then I believe that's why I have what I have today. I believe that's why I have good health, that I have wealth, that I have a good family, that I have a good relationship with you. And I think that surrounding yourself with people that are like-minded, it really helps you live uh, in that mindset of moving forward and not holding on to that because you would never let me, you and I don't, we don't gossip. We don't talk about negativity where everything we talk about is uplifting and it's very encouraging. We we're very encouraging to each other. And, and we have like our, a four-way thread going with mom and dad, Carrie Christie, mm -hmm. and we're all that way on that thread. So it's just same thing with weight loss. When you surround yourself with like-minded people, just like with this, when you surround yourself with people who are not going to let you get dragged down, it's going to be easier to stay up here. Sometimes, uh, forgiveness, Christy, I have found, um, can be super insidious. Like the being angry at someone can be insidious. And it's interesting to me because some of them were big things. Like, I mean, we all, like Christy said, we can pass around the mic. Betty, you might say, talk about your dad. Joyce, talk about her dad. Christy and I would talk about our step uncle. You know, some of you may talk about, you know, a friend that stole your husband and they took all the money in your kids. I mean, you have your stories. So some of them were big, but I'll tell you a situation I had with forgiveness. Um, I was driving down the road and um, listening to a sermon on cassette. Does everyone know what a cassette is? There yes. used to be these little things. You, yeah, my uncle Richard was preaching about forgiveness. And um, I felt like God brought to mind um, an, a, a previous mother-in-law and how I felt about that person. And when I would think about this person, I would get angry, just so angry. And I went to our dad about this. And he said to me, if you find yourself getting angry when you think about them, there's probably unforgiveness sneaky, sneaky somewhere that you don't know about. So I would say for all of you, whether you believe if you, whether you believe in Jesus or not, and whether you have a different spiritual walk, all the spiritual walks, I believe, um, you know, maybe except for like, uh, Satanism, um, we, oh, I don't think there's too many Satanists listening to our podcast. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and so. if you are, we're praying for you, <laughs> yeah. but, um, except for maybe them, um, all of your Judeo Christian and your, you know, even, even people that believe in uh, Buddhists, they believe in forgiveness. So examine your heart, regardless of your spiritual walk and ask yourself, do I have unforgiveness? Do I get unusually angry about somebody? Do I feel unusually frustrated when their name comes up? Do I just have that low key irritation about this person? There may be some unforgiveness that's lurking that you're not even aware of. The Bible says that we're supposed to forgive our enemies and we're supposed to pray for them. And that doesn't mean, uh, that doesn't mean pray for them to get a new car. That means pray for them <laughs> that they will come to the understanding of Christ. I'm, you know, my first husband that was abusive and I know he, I was not the only woman. There were other women that he did that to. I, I just get almost sick when I think about, you know, the kids and the abuse from all the other, I got through it. I didn't have kids. I got through it. I'm strong. I'm fine. I'm thriving today, yeah. but I, I get just almost physically nauseous when I think about the other women. What if they weren't as strong as me? And what if they didn't pull through and what if they battled with this? So sometimes I do pray for him. And I say, I don't say, Lord, give him a new car. I say, Lord, bring him to an understanding of what he has done and help him turn and repents and come back to you. Cause I know that he's not, uh, I know he's on a destructive 
horrible, hateful, um, terrible, terrible path. And, and I, 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 I truly, that's how I deal with, that's how I deal with things. And I truly believe I wouldn't have what I have today if I didn't, if I hadn't let those things go. So you don't oh. want you want to pray for him, but you're not praying for him to get like the win the lottery. You know, I, that's not when God says pray for him. I don't think that's what he means. I mean, I couldn't, I don't think that's what he means. Carrie, you might disagree with me. I think he means pray for them to come back around. If you're going to do some prayers on lottery, then send them my way. Chris, I don't need the lottery. I'm just teasing. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if anyone is Christ, the new creation has come. Listen, this is for somebody out there right now. The old has gone mm. and the new is here. Listen, listen, mm. I know they hurt you. I know they hurt you. And I know that some of you have put the weight on as to help with your security and to help to feel some of you, it may be that, you know, you have other things that you've done. Some people don't eat because they've had abuse happen to them. There are all sorts of things. Some people exercise obsessively. Um, some people collect things in their house to kind of help them feel better. And a lot of this stems from unforgiveness, but guess what? It is your choice today. The old can be gone because the new can be here. The ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. The old can be gone and the new can be here. It is completely up to you. You have the power. Power was taken away from you when you were hurt by people. You now can take this power back by choosing to forgive. If you're listening to this right now, then you you are responsible now for how you move forward because you've just been given the truth. So it's not that you didn't know. You can't say you didn't know. Now, you know, you, you, you why, why would you stay stuck when you know there is a way through it? There is healing. Your whole yes. life could heal. You can be manifesting all this sickness and disease and obesity because of all the bitter, bitterness and unforgiveness in your life. But from here on out, from this second that you're hearing our words, it is it now your responsibility to no longer be a victim to say, you know what? I'm no longer, I, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Jesus said in the Bible, when he forgives us of our sins, he casts them as far as the East is from the West and remembers them no more. Isn't that unbelievable? And you're telling me you can't forgive your neighbor for, for parking in your parking spot. Don't give me that baloney. You're going to live like that because you are wasting your life. If you hold on to this bitterness and unforgiveness, you are withering away at, into nothing and not accomplishing what you were put on this earth to do. And it doesn't mean Christy, just to add, just to unpack a little bit what you're saying, it doesn't mean that you aren't going to need to go to find a counselor to help you get through this stuff. It doesn't mean that like you say, I forgive you. And it's like, Bring. Right. I mean, you're not, you don't have a screwed up head and you don't have weird thoughts about relationships and you don't have some wacky ideas about food. It doesn't mean that goes away, mm -hmm. but it, it, when you get the power, then you can move forward with dealing with those things. You can find yourself a counselor. You can get, if you're a believer, you can get into a church and get into a women's Bible study, get to a glow, a glow used to be a group that we had when we were growing up. It was a bunch of women. Yeah. 1980s, 1990s, a glow conference. Anyways, hilarious. Uh, all, all the old Christians are like, hey, man, yeah. um, get yourself into a women's Bible study. Get yourself to a counselor. Get yourself with someone who loves you, cares about you, and can help you work through this stuff. And like Christy always says, and I love it when you say it, Christy, the weight is usually just what the symptom of a bigger problem. So if your weight, if your unhealthy behaviors, if the anger in your life and some other things are a symptom of a bigger problem. And that root of that problem is unforgiveness. We are encouraging you today. We have been down the road and it's so much better on the other side. At least consider in your heart, what would it look like if I were to forgive this person? I'll say one more thing about Joyce Meyer. She has publicly come out and she said that she's on antidepressants and people like just flipped out when she's on that, when she said that, you know, really? I mean, she's in her eighties. Yeah. She's in her eighties and the abuse stopped when she was 18. So it's been many years since she's been married to Dave Meyer for just I, I, 55 years or something. So she said, 
um, when people asked her about it, when it kind of got out or when she said it or whatever, they said, oh, doesn't, you know, don't you believe God to heal you? And she said, I do believe God has healed me. But when you've gone through what I have gone through, modern medicine has given us the ability to help out a little bit. And she said, not only do I stay off sugar, I exercise every day. I get my sleep every night. I don't overload myself with stress. And I also get a little bit of help chemically with an antidepressant. She said, sometimes the nightmares will come back to her at night. Mm -hmm. And, um, they're just, can you even, can you even imagine some of you can, which I'm just, my heart breaks for you. And, but some of us can't imagine that horror, horrific life of complete fear that she led. So yeah, you think, um, almost 20 years of the first 20 years of your life, you're getting that. I don't want to, you know, I'll spare you the details and. Yeah. I mean, it, there ain't nothing wrong with just a little bit of help if you need it. And she, she, I, I think that's great that she's like, yeah, I've done everything. The, the night terrors are terrible. I do believe God healed me. I believe God had, you know, she's got one of the largest ministries on the planet. And she said, and modern medicine is helping me as well. There's nothing wrong with that. I I'm so tired of there being this stigma around. I mean, you take blood pressure medication. Why wouldn't you take something to help you with the other stuff? I mean, come on, mm -hmm. geez. But I, I think that's a great point. And I'm glad you made that. That's absolutely important. We want to release you of the shame that you might be feeling. Um, I have taken it before and I'm not shame. I'm not on it now. And Carrie's taken it before. And we've all gone through times in our lives. We just need a little bit of help. In addition to the, all the, all the healthy lifestyle habits that we have, we needed a little more help. And so I think all this kind of, it wraps up nicely into do yourself a favor and forgive. Um, you know, if Jesus can forgive us for the things that, that we have done, really, I mean, you really can do it. You really can do this. It might take you a while and you might need to continue. You might battle this a little bit, but you can go down this road and your whole life is going to get better if you let go of this shame and unforgiveness. I love it. That's beautiful, Christy. Thank you. And I'm glad that you talked about this. It's a hard topic and it's going to be painful for a lot of people. People might not like it. It's not fairies and flowers and us talking about riding horses and Grangemont. You know, this is a hard topic and I'm glad that you decided to talk about it with our people. Well, some of you have had wonderful childhoods and, you know, you were protected and, and however, you know, like it, you didn't have a, a dirty uncle, you know, and I'm so, so glad about that. Um, and some of you, it's a miracle that you're even here today because of the, the things, you know, the, the amount of times that you've been knocked down and we just love all of you. We recognize all of you. We see you like on avatar. I see you. I see you, we see you and we love you and we're pulling for you and you can do this. This is not the hardest thing. Well, maybe it is the hardest thing you've ever done, but that's okay. And I believe that when you do let go of this, that we believe that when you do let go of this bitterness and unforgiveness in your life, if you're having any, if you're holding on to any, the, I think things might come into line for you. The weight's going to start coming off. You're going to find it easier to drink your water. You're going to be sleeping better and your body is going to heal itself. And when the body heals itself, it lets the excess bioaccumulated body fat go, and you're going to heal your whole body and your soul and your mind. And we believe that can happen for you. Any last words, sis? Oh no, that's beautiful. I just appreciate, I, again, I just appreciate you bringing this up and, um, and for those of you that this is your day, this is a new day for you. This really is a new day for you. And I'm excited to see what's going to happen in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, um, it's going to be remarkable what you can do when you move forward with that kind of freedom. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. Do yourself in favor and forgive. We love you guys and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Hey, I'm Christy Code Red, and thank you for listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you want to stay connected to other rebels like you, join us in our private network. Our Code Red app is a one-stop shop, free from ads, algorithms, and censorship, and a place where you can see, listen, and watch everything Code Red. You'll be encouraged, motivated, and fired up to stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Get recipe ideas, tips, tricks, and help from coaches, mentors, and other rebels. You can also purchase products, programs, and coaching all right there in one place. And if you have any trouble navigating the app, we're right there to help you. Go to coderedlifestyle.com forward slash APP to join for free. And I'll see you 
on the next episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. 